So we're with our good friends from Quill and Pad, Beth and Ian, and uh, we're gonna see what they think about this SHH edition. So Beth, we go straight into it. What did you like? Okay, well, we're only halfway through. Yeah, that's true. And I have to say my top dog so far has been the Ah Lang and Zuna triple split. I am amazed at that technology, the technicity, the, the size, that it's wearable. I, I, I just fell in love. And you, Ian? My number one watch isn't even a watch here. It's the AMC movement that Overk presented um, that's going to be put into a watch by Basel World and it's going to be hooked up to an atomic clock. And I thought that's fantastic, but it's not even a watch yet. <laughs> but the idea is really interesting. I mean, it's really taking the, the pendule sympathique uh, to, uh, to the, in the 21st yes. century. Yeah, that's really good. For me, that's the big thing here. And uh, what did you guys uh, think about the, because everybody's talking about it, the Piaget oh. Ultra, Ultra, Ultra Slim. Yeah, we just saw that this afternoon. The, the concept watch, which is two millimeters in height, blew me away, but it's so thin they don't even really want people to touch it just yeah. yet. But then there's the Ultimate, which is the serial yeah. version of it, which is, what is it, three, uh, four? 4.6, 4. which is already pretty good. Oh, you know? yeah. we had it on the wrist. I mean, it, you can, it's barely there. It's, it's like the nude watch, you know? Well, I actually <laughs> saw that one and thought, wow, that's fantastic. And then saw the thin one and thought, wow, that's a sheet of paper. Yeah. Um, yeah compared with a sheet of cardboard. That's true, because I mean, even when people talk about two millimeters, I mean, you can start, kind of imagine it, but I mean, you really have to see it in the flesh to understand how thin it is, yeah. I would have liked to have strapped it to the wrist. Yeah. That's I think it might break if yes. you do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, anything else? Um, well, we were really astounded, or not astounded, but really, as usual, very impressed by Global Forcey. You know, all the technology there. We have the continuing nanotechnology. They, we still haven't revealed a watch around that, but there was also the differential d'égalité, yeah. which which actually blew me away with its finishing and it's also its technology. Just the sheer mechanical beauty of it. I was very impressed by that as well. Yeah, and, that is a very impressive timepiece. I really love the Global. 4C GMT, the sapphire, the earth really just popped. Uh, I thought that was a beautiful watch. And in general, um, not necessarily talking about timepieces, specific timepieces, is there like kind of a trend that you've uh, noticed uh, in this edition? You know, we continue to um, sort of experiment with straps and textures and the way things feel on the wrist, also a little fashion involved. I think that that's really a nice touch for the, you know, everyday watches. There's a lot more wearable watches. We have the JLC Polaris collection. We have the new Vacheron 56. Um, I think that, or is it 65, 65? No, 56. Oh, it's 56. 56. Um, I think this trend, I would call it a little trend toward daily wearability, mm -hmm. you know, among these high luxury brands, I think is really something coming up that, you know, oh, we're looking at reality now, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they're definitely going back uh, more in, in touch with uh, the reality of the market. Uh, yeah. I actually thought last year was blue dials, but this year it's blue dials. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I've seen more blue dials and beautiful blue dials this year than I think I've seen before. So and I'm picking that as a trend. And I, I, I would add also the interchangeable strap yes, because you've seen that, you see that everywhere. Yeah, yeah, and I would add that to the straps and the, and the and, fashion component. And yeah. such a good thing for, for collectors to be able to change straps like that is a really great thing. I'm glad more and more brands are, are starting to do that. And in terms of uh, ladies' watch, uh, do you have anything to say? Um, you know, I haven't been to Van Cleef yet. I know the planetarium's waiting for me. Yeah, over, it's nice. Yeah, over it's here. It's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, at Panerai, we saw 38 millimeter yeah. watches. Yeah. Very, very nice. Here at Parmigiani, we have the new Kalpas with the Aventurine dial. And at Langenzuna, again, we had the very thin Saxonia with the Aventurine dial. Um, and it's ultra thin. It's a, it's a 37 millimeter, very, very beautiful on the wrist. And uh, uh, on the business standpoint, do you feel like uh, people in the brands are feeling a little bit more relaxed compared to last year? I feel relaxation here. I feel like maybe they've had a better year than the last couple years, but I feel like they, they, they still feel like they have to work at it. I, I don't feel like they're fully comfortable, but it's better maybe than it's been for the last couple years. And I like to see them working at it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's good for everyone. Um, because as soon as they start to get comfortable, things go bad again. So as long as they're struggling, I think it's a little bit, people are happier now, but I think this year will tell. Uh, certainly the next six months. And um, I know you guys are pretty into the, the independent scene and we didn't talk too much about them right, apart right. from the Orwerk. So anything that you want to, would you like to mention? Oh, the Armin Strom Pure Resonance really mm -hmm. got, got my attention. Mm -hmm. I think that's a beautiful, almost unisex watch mm -hmm. with a lot of technology on, on, the, on the dial that you can actually see, but not too much. It's not overpowering. I was no. very, very impressed by yeah. that. Yep. Me, me too. 
Um, I was surprised they didn't launch that one first, but they because it's more the pure resonance the watch, but they said it wasn't so arm and strong. That's right. I mean, this yeah. one is, yeah. I think, is a, is a, is a step yes. uh, for them. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a really it's something a bit different. It's yeah. a step forward, but going back to being more simple. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Who else have we seen there? Um, um, well, Romain Jerome with the uh, with the with the Spider-Man watch with this, on the Skylab. I thought that was fun, actually, which is kind of what that brand's about. Uh, we saw beautiful dials at Kari Votilainen. Oh, the Grunefeld brothers What have a some? surprise. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I don't think I've seen a bad dial at Carrie no, Vutalainen. No, exactly. Um, I, I could close my eyes and pick out any watch <laughs> and I would love it. Um, Roman Goetier's ladies' watch. Oh, I forgot about that one. A very nice one. We're talking about ladies' watches. Yeah, That's exactly. That's what I remember. Yep, his um, automatic watch now has mother of pearl and diamonds set into it and you can see the rotor from the front of the watch. So it's a very beautiful technical watch for women as well. And while we're back at that subject, Audemars Piguet, with the frosted gold they had some new uh, evolutions of that with the in the um, the royal oak with the double balance movement where you can see it at that was actually stunning, mm -hmm. and, stunning. sorry and i haven't seen it yet but i am looking forward to seeing the M new mbnf with step and stop and ava yes I'm That's looking forward to that. Cool, cool time face. I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, well, uh, looking forward to hearing some more with you guys. Uh, indeed, we're only halfway through. So, I guess there'll be some other things that we'll cover soon. All right. Looking forward. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.